Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com. Well, tonight we're going to be talking to Wolfgang Helbig. Now, Wolfgang Helbig has extensive experience as both an educator and in law enforcement, and he served as a security consultant to schools. So part of his work is to look at school shootings and investigate them and see what went wrong. Well, he found something very different when he investigated Sandy Hook. Now, yesterday, Adon Salazar covered his interview with American Free Press, and he pointed out some of the, we have the original interview embedded in there, and he pointed out some of the issues that Mr. Halbig has discovered. But this is nothing new. If you remember, shortly after the shooting, the state police had a press conference in which they threatened social media bloggers and said, you better get this right or we might come after you. What he said is, all information relative to this case is coming from these microphones. Sounds very much like what we later heard at the Boston bombing. The FBI said, don't listen to anyone except us. Don't listen to anybody except our official information. And then, of course, they won't release anything. And that's what we're finding out from Mr. Halbig. He runs the Child Safety Institute. That's childsafetyinstitute.com. He's an expert witness in the field of school safety and security. He's testified before Congressional Commission about school safety and security. He's a former executive director of the National Institute for School and Workplace Safety. He's been appointed by the Florida governor to serve on a commission about school safety. He was a director of safety and security for a large public school system in Florida. He's been a Florida state trooper. He's been a featured guest on many national news programs, including Dateline NBC, Good Morning America, and MSNBC. And joining us here tonight is Wolfgang Helbig. Well, thank you for joining us today, Mr. Halbig. Now, you've been a consultant and a security specialist. You've investigated prior school shootings like Columbine. Is it surprising to you that they would not even give you any information, but then that they would come back at you with harassment? Well, I am total shocked. You know, with my background being a former Florida State Trooper and U.S. Customs agent, being in education for like 35 years, uh, I'm a national school safety consultant. I travel the country. I had a contract with the United States Department of Justice. I trained over 3,500 school police officers, school superintendents, and school principals on how to make their schools safer. I mean, all they have to do is look at my background, look what I have done. I was appointed by Governor Jeb Bush, former Governor Jeb Bush, here in Florida on the Florida Safe School Commission. I had to be confirmed by the Senate. I mean, I have a background, and I think what really bothered me, I have tried everything in a very professional way to get to use the Connecticut Freedom of Information Act. I mean, and you've been with working that at shooting this. On You've been working at this for over 10 months, and instead of any months. transparency or releasing the information to you as they're legally required, instead their response is to come back and to try to intimidate you. Absolutely, and, and, and the requests are so simple, I yeah. can't imagine what the rationale would be for refusing it. But then, a week before Christmas, uh, you know, I got two people coming to my door, plainclothes people. I thought maybe they were selling something. They ring the bell and they, you know, I open the door and they show me their badges and they're telling me they're homicide investigators for the Lake County, Florida Sheriff's Department and they need to have a conversation with me. Well, I'm not intimidated because, you know, I've been a police officer, so I'm comfortable in that environment. Took them in my living room, we sat down, and they went over my, I mean, they had, they knew everything about me. Somebody did their homework. And then the next thing, you know, they're telling me that I need to stop asking questions about the Sandy Hook shooting. 
And what made it even worse, that if I didn't stop asking those questions, that the Connecticut State Police were going to file criminal charges, felony charges against me for harassment. Well, and you know, we, we, and, this and, the, and the lead up to this, I pointed out that at the very beginning, they had a press conference with the Connecticut State Police and they said, don't listen to anybody except us, just like they later did at the Boston bombing press conferences. The FBI did that, and they actually threatened people, saying, we got people out there, social media bloggers who are putting stuff out. If you say something that isn't true, we're going to come after you and, and uh, you know, made a threat to them. But how do you know that it's not true if they won't release anything, of course? People are speculating because they're seeing contradictions. They're skeptical of the official story because of the motivations. If they really wanted to make the school safer, they would have an open, transparent investigation. They would talk about what went wrong, but they're not doing that. Instead, they've got a very different agenda to come after the, the gun owners. But So you had this one visit from two plain clothes men, but you've had a second visit, haven't you? That was just the last couple of days. Hmm. You know, ever since I appeared on a, there's a radio broadcast named American Free Press, obviously, the Newtown police chief and all the police officers up there must be listening to American Free Press mm -hmm. because... The commentator asked me if uh, if I have been to Newtown. I said no. Then he asked me, "Are you planning on going up there?" And I said, "Yeah, I think I'm going to travel up there in the next month or so. I'd like to meet with the school board members because I have a nexus. I'm an educator. I want to know why school board members won't give me the responses to my Connecticut of Freedom of Information Act. And you're not going to believe it." The Newtown police calls the Lake County Sheriff's Office again, and this time I got uniformed deputies at my door, hmm. and you're not going to believe what they said. They what said, I Mr. Halbig, I know this sounds crazy, but we we had a call. We've been getting calls left and right from the Newtown Police Department to come see you. They want to know when you're going to come to Newtown. Wow. Well, you know, that's a and, pattern that we're seeing more and more from the governments being led from the top. By Barack Obama, he uses the IRS against his political enemies. Right. He does it yep. openly without any, even any shame. I mean, Nixon tried to do criminal things like that, got impeached for it. He was ashamed of it. They used to try to hide their crimes like that. Now they're out in the open because they want to intimidate people. And you ought to see the next question. I mean, the next question is probably as offensive, and I saw that they were embarrassed. The next question was the Newtown police chief and, and, and management up there. They want to know if you own a handgun. Now, what in the hell really? does that mean? What really? are they trying to implicate that I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to come up there and shoot somebody? Wow. See, they're trying wow. to paint me in a negative picture. Yeah. I think they came in here thinking I wore camo pants and black shirt and I had deer heads all over my living room. I mean, I Not think that that's that would be a problem. Time. <laughs> I wouldn't have a problem with any of that. But, but what I don't they're doing either. is. My yeah. son has all kinds of deer head right. in his house. What, what they're trying to do is they're trying to demonize anybody. They have certain labels that they can apply to people. For many people on the left, just accusing somebody of being a Tea Party person is enough. But they want to make all guns dangerous to people. They want everyone to be afraid of the mere sight of a gun. And if you are a gun owner, DHS is training the police as well as the military to think that you're a terrorist. And so that's, that's what's behind that, especially coming out of the, uh, the Connecticut people. But now you've also received a letter from Connecticut. Is that correct? No, I, I haven't gotten a letter. Oh, a phone call, right? It was a phone call, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. This, yeah. this is my favorite. The favorite one is, you know, when I try to, you know, answer questions, part of the puzzle I'm trying to put together. I have never, ever, in all these tragic shootings that I've been part of, and I'm an expert witness in both state and federal courts, they actually regard my opinions as a fact. I have never seen porta potties being delivered on this elementary school campus within three hours of this massive shooting. Mm -hmm. Now, who in the world would think about ordering porta potties that morning? <laughs> I mean, that is probably the last thing. So, what I did, I caught the name of the company who owned the porta potties. So, I called up to find out who ordered them. When were they ordered? And the secretary says, that's confidential. We're not allowed to re release that information. I'm saying, you have got to be wow. kidding me. Porta potties are now confidential. And the next <laughs> day, I mean, the next morning, South, a Southbury police officer called me in my home and told me to stop harassing them. 
Wow, you can't even get the straight poop from the porta potty people. How about porta that? potty? We can't even get the. You're right. Every, that's a great analogy. Poop every, can't get everybody, <laughs> everybody thinks that they're a CIA agent anymore. You know, it's only uh, only if you have uh, a, a right to know this stuff. Everything is a top secret, state secret for people. But and that's this, a real this smoking one, are you gun. Ready? When you talk about when you talk about secrets, mm -hmm. listen. I hope every police officer out there, every paramedic, every trauma center doctor. You guys, listen, if that's how we respond to a massive casualty incident, we're in serious trouble. We are in serious trouble because yeah. that's not how we do it. And y'all know that. And you need to speak up. Well, let me ask you, I, I want to cover some of the biggest red flags that you've come up with. But we've got to go to a break roll shortly here. But let me ask you some of the questions that you're trying to get that you still haven't gotten from them. Well, you know, the first question, I mean, remember this now, okay? Every school emergency that we've seen across the country, the clock starts ticking when you hear shots fired in the school or the first 911 call. So at Sandy Hook at 935, shots fired. What happens in the first 10 minutes, it's crucial. Mm -hmm. Active shooter drill, first responders, you get there as quickly as you can, you neutralize the threat. These police officers from Newtown, they're parking a quarter of a mile away from the front door. Mm. What is that about? Is that new a training procedures? We don't park a quarter of a mile and come through the woods. Right. You get up there, you neutralize the threat because children and school staff members are clinging to life. Then the next one that really bothered me, knowing that shots are fired and potential children and teachers might be getting seriously injured, why would you not? Who is the person? Who was the person who would not order the trauma helicopters to respond to Sandy Hook when they use trauma helicopters in every practice drill that you see on television, on Channel 12, whatever these TV channels? Man, they, just, they promote. Yeah, they show all the trauma helicopters landing when they're practicing. Yeah. Here you've got probably one of the worst shooting incidents in this country. They don't even request the trauma helicopters. And doing and being a cop, I called Livestar, which is the helicopter service out of Hartford. I called them and I said, I cannot believe that you people would not respond. Mr. Halbig, we were never requested. We were in shock. We could not believe hearing the transmission that we were not now that's a puzzle. Well, you know, I want to know who the you, you remember, I want to know who the person was. Yeah, at the Navy Yard shooting. We had first responders yeah. that were told to stand down. So that's that's another indicator of it, of it being a false flag. There's just so many of them, especially the fact that they are more concerned about porta potties than they are about emergent EMS services. There. Oh, they got the porta potties on time, and they were delivered on golf carts. Now, who does that on golf carts? We don't <laughs> deliver porta potties on a golf cart. Yeah. I, it, I mean, you know so what? The air, you know, I got a haircut today, and this is really, I, I don't mean to get off just a tad. I went and got a haircut. The lady behind me, and I said to her, have you ever heard about the Sandy Hook shooting? She says, oh, yes. I said, do you think children actually died that day? She says, yes, they did. And I said, what makes you say that? The television told them. Our news media told us. Yeah, See, that's they right. don't know. That's right. The people across this country are, it's an illusion. This is not a hoax. It's not a conspiracy. I think it's the biggest illusion that Homeland Security and FEMA has ever portrayed against the American people. Well, they and come you know out, they, they instantly solve it, and it instantly matches the scenario that they want for their agenda. And then, as you point out, there are so many things that start to surface as you look at, immediately. You start to see things like you were just talking about. We've got to go to break. We're going to be right back. Well, that's it for our regular news program, but stick around if you're a Prison Planet TV subscriber. We're going to get some more information from Wolfgang Helbig, some of the biggest red flags that he's discovered in his investigation. Stay tuned. Tune in to PrisonPlanet.tv for an extended broadcast. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Welcome back. We're continuing our interview with Wolfgang Helbig, a security expert and consultant with extensive experience in both education and law enforcement. He told us how his in independent investigation, which he does as part of his profession, he investigates school shooting. He told us how that was met with intimidation 
and harassment after the stonewalling. Now we want to find out some of the biggest red flags that he's discovered in his investigation. Well, just before the break, we were talking about some smoking guns.